name. Amen. Amen. Well, one of the things that drives me nuts is wasting food. Anybody with me? Like, I cannot stand it, wasting food. And recently, we were traveling, and I forgot that I had some leftover quesadillas and pancakes in my backpack. And I know, it's, and that sounds so weird. Like, what a weird combo. And I get back, and it's like two or three days later, I, I show up to a study session, and I'm like, like, something doesn't smell right. And sure enough, it was, it was in my backpack. And I took it, and I felt horrible because I'm, I'm going to the trash can and throwing it away. And I was like, oh, I'm such a bad steward. I'm wasting food. Like, anybody with me at all at church? Like, no? Okay, you guys, you guys can just throw it away. And I, I, it freaks me out. And the good news is, a couple days later, I had a chance to redeem myself. And we were out at this, this dinner with some amazing people. And at the end, someone had ordered this chocolate cake with, like, chocolate, or with vanilla ice cream. And they couldn't eat it all. And dude, I was stuffed. You know what I'm saying? When you're like, you ate good food, you're like just at the right place. And you're like, no, I cannot fit anything more in there. But they're like, hey, do you want any of this? And I'm like, no, but you cannot waste that. So I found that other part of my stomach, you know, the dessert part. And I just went for it. And, uh, and I was a good steward. Someone say good stewardship. I mean, that's just flat good stewardship. Do not let food go to waste. Um, I was thinking about this. I, I was also thinking from the perspective of a parent. Where are my parents at? Raise your hand in the church. And you know when you're a parent and you work hard for something and then you bless your kids with it and you want them to use it well and steward it well. And the worst is like when they, they get it and they act, they're all entitled or they, or they waste it or they just don't take care of it. Isn't that the worst, parents, right? Like, none of y'all kids do that, I'm, I'm sure. But there's something in you that are like, what are you doing? Like, I worked hard for this. I gave this to you. I want you to take care of it, steward it, manage it well. And they waste it. And you're like, guys, I'm never gonna buy you anything ever again. I was thinking about this, and it's really this, this text today, this parable is a picture of how our heavenly father has graciously delegated to us resources to manage for him until he comes back again. By the way, isn't that good news that he's going to come back again? I mean, this wild world that we live in, that's so sin saturated and you see so much chaos. How many appreciate that when Jesus comes back, he's scrapping this whole deal He's going to restore the settings to the Garden of Eden. There's going to be a new heaven, a new earth. The former things will pass away. No more death, no more decay, no more suicide, no more chaos. Man, it's going to be beautiful. I can't wait for that day. In the meantime, though, guess what? He's given us things to steward, to manage until he comes. And when Jesus comes back, Christian, he's going to look at you and I. He's going to be like, hey, I gave you this talent. I gave you this treasure. What have you done while I was away? When he returns, he's going to be looking for a return on his investment. And this was a challenging word for me as I was, I was studying this text. And if you, didn't, if you missed it during this week in Matthew 25, let me just review the cliff notes real quick of the story. Jesus tells, he's paralleling this spiritual truth, and he says this practical story. He says there's this, this rich guy. He's going to go for this long trip, this long vacation, and he's going to distribute resources, all of his wealth, basically, to three different people and tells them, take care of this while I'm away. You remember it? So to one, he gave five bags. Everybody say five. He gave five bags of silver to one. He gave two, everybody put up the deuce right here, two bags of silver to another servant, and then one servant, he gave one bag of silver. 
and he said, hey man, I'm going on this trip. And, and that, they were familiar with that because in that time, that's what they would do. They would have their servants take care of their property if they were gonna go on a voyage. And they didn't want it just to be idle. They, he wanted to make a return on his investment while he was away. And so Jesus tells this story. He says, I will return one day. And you'll give an account of how you manage the resource I graciously gave you. Paul actually shared this to the church in Corinth. You can jot it down, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. Here's what it says. We must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we've done in this earthly body. There, there will come a time, Jesus returns, and we'll give an account on what we did, what he has given to us. Romans 14, 12, Paul writes to the church in Rome. He says, yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. Wow. Is that sobering or what, man? Like, he's gonna say, hey, how did you do with what I gave you? Some of you guys are really good looking. By the way, you'd have nothing to do with it. It's not like you were in your mother's womb talking about, hey, you know, it's like, some of y'all can sing. Some of you is gonna distribute crazy financial resource. There, there's a variety of different things that God entrusts us with. And when he comes back, he's like, yo, what did you do to honor me and to advance my kingdom through what I gave you? And so let's take a look at this text. If you're a note taker, jot it down. Number one, entrust. He's going to entrust us with certain gifts and resources for us to manage. It's Matthew chapter 25. Let's begin in verse 14. The Bible says, again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants, and what? What did he do, church? And entrusted, and then I want you to also underline in your Bible the very next word, entrusted his money to them while he was gone. Let me just pause there real quick. I think this is one of the most powerful principles we as believers can really let resonate deep in our souls. Everything we've been given, it's his. I always tell the story, there was this young uh, toddler, one of my favorite human beings on the planet, and he was shooting baskets one day, and one of his friends wanted to you know, to shoot a couple too. And he, and he looked at me, he's like, mine, mine. And I said, Who's, whose basketball is that? He said, my basketball. I said, no, that's God's basketball. He just gave it to you to take care of for a while. I said, now whose basketball is? He's like, God's basketball. <laughs> I'm telling you now, if we can de grab this, this revelation, I don't care if it's $1, a million dollars. I don't care if it's one you know, okay voice or a beautiful, it's all his. So he's entrusted his money while he was gone. Verse 15, he gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, one bag of silver to the last, dividing it, this is wild, in proportion to their abilities Then he left on his trip. I was thinking of this when I was studying this, and uh, if you're, I don't know, a business owner or manager. Isn't it interesting how um, you give more to people you can trust? He gave, I'm thinking of, he's like, okay, the servant on my team that's their early, faithful, great attitude, trustworthy, I'm gonna give him the five bags of silver. That dude's gonna multiply it. He's gonna get to work. When I come back from my trip, he's gonna multiply it. I know it, I can trust him. And then the two, it's the lady that's like, Shows up a little late every now and again, but God brings some pretty good value to the team. I'm gonna give him two. And then there's the knucklehead that's like, not real trustworthy, but every now and again brings the bomb idea. All right, I'll give him one and just kind of risk it for the biscuit, see what happens. I don't know. That's kind of how I read the Bible. I'm sorry. Okay, so back into this truth. Listen, in this parable, God is saying, I'm like the master. Jesus is saying, I'm gonna go away for quite a long time, but I'll eventually come back. In the interim, you guys are like these servants, 
and I'm gonna distribute different amounts of money and talents and gifts, resources, at different levels to different people. But every one of you guys, I'm asking you the same thing. Just be a faithful steward of what I've given you. Get after it. I've entrusted this to you. So I'll ask a question. This is, I'm reading the Bible, I'm asking myself. And I'll ask you, what has, what has God given you? What are you gifted at? What kind of resource have you been entrusted with? And I was thinking about, let me just run down a couple, because there's, we could go a, a variety of directions in here. By the way, he's absolutely talking about money here. The word um, in other translations is a talent. And it doesn't mean like as like talented, gifted, like musically, but it's actually a way that they would weigh and measure money back then. A lot of scholars submit that one talent of silver would equal 20 years of wages for the common worker. So imagine, that's, that's a lot of resource that, th that this master is delegating out. But I was thinking for us, what are some of the resources God's given us? Number one, time, just jot it down, time. What are you doing with your time? What am I doing with my time? I was thinking how, how many hours I waste watching Sports Center. And I was like, okay, Hollywood Brown went to the Chiefs. That's gonna be exciting. But is it really gonna do anything for like the kingdom of God? We're my Chiefs fans. You guys were like, yeah, it, might. it actually might. It might, it might. Okay. But how about you? Like, how are you stewarding the, the, the time? Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Sorry, none of you guys will get it except the old people like me. How, how, are, how are you and I stewarding? Some people just, you know, you're, you're just scrolling through life. And it's weird because like, then all of a sudden, like yesterday, I'll give you an example. I had the honor and privilege of serving at my father-in-law's celebration of life. And he passed away. We celebrated his life. He, God delegated to him 77 years on this planet. Here's the thing though. If you could be in your 20s, teens, 30s, do you know, you don't, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. So we have time. We don't know how much time. We have limited time, we know that. There's gonna be one day we're gonna step into eternity and we will see Jesus and he'll be like, how, how'd you do with the time? How'd you, how'd you steward the time? The, number two, treasure, you can jot it down. He's gonna delegate a certain amount of financial resource to, to all of us. It might be a little, it might be a lot. It really doesn't matter the amount, it matters. He's gonna ask us how we stewarded, how we gave it back to him how we return the tithe, how we, how we thought about advancing God's kingdom with the financial resource he's delegated to us. And you can jot it down. It's funny because <laughs> the first scripture I'll give to you on, there's a, there's a million on tithing. Let me just give you a couple. Number one, Malachi chapter three. And let me just simply read it. Let God speak to you on this. This is not about Todd. This is not about Love Church. This is you and God working out how you wanna steward the financial resources that God has allotted to you during your time on this planet. This is what God says to us. He says, bring the tithe, which is 10%, bring the tithe into the storehouse, which is where you get fed spiritually. Bring the tithe to the storehouse. You're returning a portion, 100%'s God's, you're returning the first 10 to the storehouse that there may be food in my house the way to be able to share the gospel and build teams and, and get his word out. And he says, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Have, have you ever been there? Like, God, just stop with these blessings. This is insane. It's not necessarily financial. It could be emotional. It could be just, man, God's grace and how he surrounds you with the right people at the right time. I mean, I mean it's, it's numerous to see how God flows his blessing in our life. But a lot of times we stop. I want you to look at verse 11. And, everybody say and. And God says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. 
You've got a devil sneaking up in your, your motor right now. You've got a V6. It's like the enemy's like just pulling plugs and you're leaking oil everywhere, man. That's a crazy thing. He promises to rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord. Whatever field you're in, doesn't matter where you're working, what you're doing. It's all God's. We return that first and best to him and he blesses the rest. It happens time and time and time again. I remember this. This was, I remember hearing this message and my first reaction, if I was really honest, I was like, no way. That was a lot of money. And the time was I had just got my first game check from the Miami Dolphins. And to me, I grew up on Spam and Macaroni. That was a large check. And the pastor got up, he's like, yeah, you bring that first and best 10% back to, to, to me at your local church. I was like, nah, man. And I actually bucked it for a while. And then God's spirit, it wasn't the pastor, it was God's spirit was convicting me going, that is mine, I got something better for you. Come on, man, come on, test me, trust me. And I remember cutting that check. That was a big daddy check. For me, again, not for some of y'all, but for me it was big. By faith, that was the beginning of my faith journey in finances, and he hasn't failed me yet. All over the entire, my whole life, our whole life, 26 years. And we were at that dinner with some friends the other night, and one of the, one of the ladies who's been with us from day one, she got up and she's like, now preach it, pastor. Preach that tithe. She's like, it changed. She's like, no. And she was like getting like teary. She said, no, it changed our entire life. It changed our marriage, our family, our future. Please tell the body so they can at least have a chance in this area. I said, okay, I'm going to bring it. Um, just a couple more real quick. Can I give it to you? Dealing with stewarding treasure. Num Matthew 23, 23. Because here's what I get a lot. The tithe is an Old Testament principle. Actually, it's an entire Bible principle, and Jesus affirms it. Matthew 23, 23, he's talking to these religious leaders. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, you Pharisees, hypocrites. It's like what Cap was talking about last week. For you're careful, they're, look, watch this, to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb garden. So they were, they were tithers but they ignored the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. But then Jesus, what does he say? You should tithe, yes. That's Jesus. If Jesus is saying it, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. And then finally, this is kind of like our verse at this church, because I want you, you're a free moral agent, I want you to work this out between you and God when it comes to this area of your life. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds gets a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Now, here's the key verse right here. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. He's, he's like, the, the person like, oh my goodness, you saved my soul? I'm not going to hell. I'm, my marriage is back to I, you. Are you kidding me, God? I cannot wait to bring back to you a small portion of all you've blessed me with. The word actually in the Greek is hilariously. So it's like laughing as you go. If you're crying as you cut your chin, oh my goodness, don't give. Cheerfully. Out of the abundance, God, you've been so gracious. I want to steward this well. Time, treasure, talent. I've kind of talked about this. Just this week, I'll give you just one small example of so many of you are stewarding your talent, your personality, your gifts, your spiritual gifts. And uh, just this week, our band took time to use their musical gifts. Our film team took time to record a rendition of a song called Sunday is Coming and they put it out on YouTube and it came to my phone. I was in my car and if I'm honest, I was kind of like feeling a little anxious about something. I turned that thing on, I started worshiping God and I was like in tears and it almost snapped me out of a funk and I was back on track. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Talk about stewarding talent. 
leveraging it. They've been trusted. I wish I was entrusted with a great voice like Austin. Austin just, he's like, his smile and his voice, I'm like, can I have that? And God's like, nah. <laughs> you have your own talent. What talent do you have? You, you, you leverage it for the glory of God to help people. And n- number four, to me, what this parable is really all about is we're, we're, we've been entrusted with the truth of the gospel. It's the greatest, what's the greatest gift he's given us? Yes, man, thank God for the finances. Thank God for the family. Thank God for, you know, the, the personality or the, the spiritual gift. And all that is great. But what's the number one thing that I'm grateful for is my salvation. The truth that I'm not going to hell now, I'm going to heaven, not because of what I have done, but because the perfect work of Jesus Christ on the cross that is the gospel. I am, I am forever grateful to God. And so the greatest way that we can steward and manage what we've been entrusted with, we've been entrusted with the truth of the gospel to save lives. And listen, your, what happened in your life and your story is going to speak to different people than mine. You have a unique story. So what we do is we steward the story and the spaces and places we're at and God's God's grace and his gospel flows through us and people look at you're like, man, there's hope for me too. I was just thinking about this. There's a guy that I've been praying for that, man, he's, he's hurting right now. He's got deep pain and he's trying to drink to mask the pain. And I'm like, oh man, I mean, I just want to see this guy. I get it. He's not a bad guy. And here's the thing. Part of my story, some of you guys don't know, I was addicted in the worst way. I was stuck, I was depressed, I was thinking of suicide, and now I wanna leverage my story for the glory of God, and he's gonna go, wait, wait, hold on now. What, what, what happened? What is that? Give me the opportunity, God, to build a bridge and, and to share the truth that I've been entrusted with. I'm telling you, you got a church that's, that's stewarding that, that is a game changer. Paul wrote about it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Here's what he said. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be, what does it say? To be entrusted with the good news. So we're entrusted, church. And that's the picture that he's presenting. Rich dude, God, gives the bags of silver to us. We're the servants. Some of y'all are five bags of silver type people. Y'all are just gifted, talented. You got all the money in the world, man. Y'all are just, on the conveyor belt, God was just, just kept on giving stuff to you. Some of us, we're the one talent. It's like, all right, I guess I'll give you something. It doesn't matter though. It doesn't matter if you're five, two, or one. He's entrusted it to us, but now what is he asking? Number two, write it down, to invest well. To invest what he's given us. Verse 16, chapter 25 It says this, the servant who received the five bags of silver, he began to, underline in your Bible, he began to invest the money and earn five more. I mean, this guy got to work. He doubled his money. Dude was in this, you know, working stocks. He was doing research, making sure, man, the master's money was gonna be multiplied. His master was gonna come back. He was gonna return. He needed an ROI, good ROI. Five, he doubled the money multiplied it. The servant with the two bags also went to work. Someone say, work it. Come on, man, work it and earn two more. I'm picturing five people that you're going to lead to Christ. Two more. Another miracle. Miracle after miracle. Sorry, I can't sing. I I forgot to tell you. Two more. How many want two of your friends right now who are lost? They're great people, but they're on their way to hell and stumbling all the way through it. Don't you want those two people to come to Christ? Don't, they, don't you want them to have what you have? I deeply in my heart, I'm thinking about this guy again. All I want for him is God's best. All I want for him is to have his blinders chucked out from the enemy and to see the light and go, no more, Satan. I'm all in with Jesus. And now the marriage was restored and the kids' relationship, man, I've seen it happen. 
Golly, I'm so sorry. I'm kind of getting excited over here. Let me just relax for a second. Verse 18, but the servant who received the one bag, he dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. I was thinking about this in my own life and I was, how am I investing? Am I investing or am I digging? Am I investing, am am I advancing or am I hoarding and hiding? Where am I at? With what God has graciously given to us. I, I was thinking of this concept and praying, I'm like, how do I connect this? Um, And I was thinking about one of my friends who's a financial advisor. Some of you guys, you work hard and you're like, I don't wanna take a bunch of time reading all like the charts on stocks and real estate and all that. And I'm gonna trust someone, I'm gonna give them a certain amount of resource and let them build my portfolio. That's what a financial advisor is. One of my buddies is one and he's a trusted advisor because He's got a track record of taking person's hard-earned money and putting him to work, and he's like, man, I'm gonna give you $500. Next thing you know, you'll call, like, call him like five days later. He's like, bro, I got you another 500. Dang, dude, get some more money in your hand. Then I was thinking, you know what? We're like God's financial advisors. That sounds weird, doesn't it? He's like, hey, here you go. Now, what I want you to do is take this resource and work it. Don't be lazy. Don't start digging and hiding it. What do you have? Get after it. Tap your neighbor real quick. Just tell him. Wake him up a little bit. Say, get after it. I want to commend so many right here. It's interesting. There's three people behind cameras right now. What are they doing? This guy, Joel, right here is one of my favorite dudes in the world. He's a pastor He cares so much about what God is doing. He wants to give back to God. And he's like, you know what? I can get behind a camera and get a tight shot on the man of God in the middle of the stage right now. Yeah, Joel. He gave me the little heart sign right there. There's people in the back making sure the volume is not, I always tell them, just bring it down a little bit, guys. You're blasting the ears out. Thank you guys for the glory of God. All over, there's, There's people in the parking lot. It was windy and cold out today. What are they doing? They care. They're like, I don't have a lot, but I can give. And I'm gonna give back to God. I'm gonna steward it. No longer am I gonna be lazy, lonely, all all like about myself. I'm gonna get outside the box and actually get after it for the glory of God. I'm gonna invest what he's been given, what God's given. And I just wanna commend you, church, it's so cool, all, everywhere. There's people right next door right now, wiping noses and backsides for the glory of God right now. I think they're the, they're the secret agents in the church, man. I praise God for the entire team here and all y'all that are in the game. This, just recently, we, we did an annual report, which I think is healthy, just to see what God has done and let me just show you just a couple things. Look at, look at the awesome family, by the way. Let's give it up for the Ritters, man. Look at that. Mac Daddy. He was a handsome young man right there. I've always had a man crush on him. 1,064 decisions for Christ. Can we just celebrate God, what he's doing? I mean, are you kidding me? I look at that decisions online. There's a young man that God's gifted in an extreme way with how to communicate, how to build bridges, how to share the gospel. And a lot, what is he say? He's saying yes. And now a team's building around online from all over the world, helping him. Some of your dudes, where are they? Ladies, dudes, all over the place. The homie in India, he's just on the chat right now. Where are you at, dude? Just right now. Is he on there right now? Let's give it up for Vinay real quick. Come on, Vinay. Just getting after it with your, with your gifts. It's crazy. And, and this is just, man, this is, I wish I could like celebrate even more. I was thinking about the story of, there's one of you who works at a rehabilitation facility in this area. 
and you love God, you love what he's doing here, you saw a young man that went through a really tough accident, you brought him here, he gives his life to Christ. Just this week, a couple of our pastors were invited to go to the facility and baptize this young man at the facility. You're gonna tell me that God's not at work with what he's doing with all y'all? It's crazy. And I could go on and on. I mean, those of you, how many of you are in groups right now? Raise your hand real quick. Do you know, because some people are going like this, I can't preach, I can't sing, I, I can't, I'm not, I can't, I'm not. Listen, if, do you have an ear? You, you know one of the greatest needs in the church right now? One friend. In fact, one friend that will just listen, actively listen. Everybody just, just lean in just a little. I can't do that, I can't. Can you do this? and they're working through some tough stuff, you show up to your group, not about what you're gonna get, but what you're gonna give. You're gonna give a listening ear. It's powerful, and it's happening. Just, and I mentioned it, just yesterday, I observed you at work and had the privilege of celebrating my father-in-law, his life of 77 years, and after my mother-in-law and I were just hanging out and uh, there were people that showed up and, man, cooked some pulled chicken to the glory of God. Huh? And she's like, man, this is good. This tastes good. Baked beans with the bacon in it. Pfft, come on. What is that? Stewarding gifts. And then it was interesting as Mary and I were just hanging together, sharing stories and loving on her. And one by one, people in her small group just came over one by one and gave her a hug. Mary, it's one day at a time, I got your back. To me, that's what the church is about. That's stewarding gifts. And when we get in the game, when we say, hey, don't just come to church, get in a group, why do we do that? It's not just for your good and God's best in your life, but it's also for someone else. And when we leverage those gifts, man, something changes. <laughs> I was studying this and I was so convicted because um, I, God asked this question to me. He said, Todd, are you investing what I've entrusted you with or are you ingesting what I've given you? I was like, well, first of all, I don't even know what ingest means. I need to go ahead and look that thing up. I had a kind of an idea and it's you eat it and then you eliminate it. You waste it. I was like, oh, I'll just be honest with you, man. I've had seasons of my life where God has been so gracious to me with time, treasure, talent. I've hoarded it for myself and I've wasted it on earthly possessions and things that I think I needed when I could have stewarded it for the glory of God. In no way am I saying there's anything wrong with nice things, but man, I'm telling you, sometimes I get distracted. I think it's all about me. I'm not investing, I'm ingesting. And so sometimes I beat myself up and, I, you know, I'm like, man, I'm not an eternal investor. I'm a temporal consumer. I'm just a slacker. And then every now and again, God will be like, yeah, you are right now, but I love you, and I got, I got a bunch of grace for you. You want to take me up on it? You want to make some adjustments and double down again? And I'm like, thank you. Who's grateful for the grace of God? It's not to shame you. It's not to blame you. It's, it's to awaken you and I and say, come on, man, because why? Because number three, there will be a test. There will be a test. When he returns, he will look at all of us. There'll be a personal account that we will give to God for the limited time and treasure and resource that he delegated to us. And again, not in this fearful way, but in this, man, I wanna be able to go, man, yeah, check out God, man. <laughs> What, what you have given me and what has been multiplied and the souls that have been saved and, and, the, and, the, and the lives that have been changed. I wanna, I wanna be like awaiting his return, like stoked about it. So he talks about it in verse 19. Watch this. <laughs> he says, after a long time, their master returned from his trip. He called them to give an account. There it is, this test, this reckoning of how they had used his money, his money. 
The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more. Isn't it funny that the, the guy that had five, that multiplied five, he came first to the master? It's like when your, uh, your parents come back and you had cleaned the house from top to bottom. Hey, you run right to them. Did you see what we did? Or, or you had a party instead and they came home and you're like, oh man, let me hide from them. None of, none of you guys did that. Okay, good. The guy with five came first, 21. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I'll give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. So good. Some of you guys, I wanna commend you. You're five bags of silver type people, and man, you have worked it. You, by the power and spirit of God, you've participated with what he's doing. You're seeing souls saved. You're seeing your neighborhood change, your work environment. I commend you. Keep up the good work as empowered by God. He'll entrust you with more. Then the one with two, verse 22, servant who had received the two bags came forward and said, master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest and I have earned two more. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I'll give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. You know what I, I caught when I was studying this that I love? Notice the response to the one with five and the one with two is exactly the same. He said, well done, good, and what? Faithful. Didn't say fruitful. He said faithful. And here's the deal. It doesn't matter if you've been given two, one, five. He's looking for faithfulness. That's freed me. That totally freed me. What can I do? All I can do is show up and be faithful. That's it. I don't worry about the fruit. God adds the fruit. I'm just faithful by the Spirit of God. That's the challenge to all of us. Faithful. Someone say faithful. Uh, I heard a pastor talk about God used him to reach thousands, and his wife was raising three kids at home the entire ministry career, and she felt bad. She's like, man, you're reaching all these people for Christ, and here I am with these three knucklehead kids at home. He looked at her, he said, you're getting the same exact reward as I am. You're faithful to raise disciples in your home. I gotta speak to some moms right now. I'm gonna look at you right now. You're like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Raise your kids right in the word of God. Disciple your kids for the glory of God. Faithful, just faithful to the call. I honor my wife, how God threw her. She was so consistent in modeling, not a perfect life, but a God-honoring life in the word of God and train the kids today. Just last night, we were out with them, all six of us, them and their, one has a wife, one is about to have a wife. Hey. <laughs> and I'm like, for part of it, I'm just like in tears going, this is my life? Steward it well. And then finally, the last one, and then we'll land the plane, verse 24, then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate, which, by the way, is a bunch of baloney. Thank you. There you go. I was looking for the word. You know what that was? And this happens in the church. It's a warped version of who God is. You might be at church today and you were raised in an environment of legalism, of hypocrisy, and so now you have a warped version of who God is. This man has a version of God that he's hard, that he's gonna try to take something from him. It's actually the opposite. I thought you were this, but here's the key, verse 25, but I was what? I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. Boy, can I relate to that scripture. Maybe time for one story and, man. As a preacher, it's weird because you, you're not dealing with selling widgets or items. You're entrusted with taking the very scripture by the spirit of God and seeing souls saved. It's super daunting. I don't wanna mess it up. And if I'm perfectly honest with you, at times, I'm super scared to come up on this stage because I don't know what's gonna come out. I don't know if it's gonna connect. I don't know if it's gonna help. 
Most importantly, I don't want it to misrepresent the heart of God for you. And if I'm way honest, sometimes I'd rather be working at Costco or at a car dealership giving Costco bacon and a Volkswagen because it's not near as dicey for me. And there's some times that I walk up on this stage and I just wanna like, yo, Matt, can you take it, bro? I don't know if I can do it today. And sometimes I just wanna take my talent and hide it. I wanna take the riches that God has given to me over the years in the word and I wanna hide it, I wanna bury it. Why? Because I'm fearful. Where are you fearful at? I had a shift in my football career. I, I moved from quarterback to receiver and I had to make a mental adjustment because early on when I first started catching passes, I would be running a route and I'd be running across the field. The, the ball would be in the air and here was the mindset that I had. Oh crap, don't drop it. And guess what? That mindset, what did I do? Dropped it. And then I felt the spirit of God, was crazy. I, I promise you this is true. I don't know if the, if the spirit of God was telling me this, but that's what, I sensed the spirit. He's like, next time you run a route, you're on an in-breaking route, instead of, oh crap, I'm gonna drop it, that ball is mine. It snapped me out of it. And I just came to preach to someone today, that's been your mindset. Oh no, I'm gonna drop it for God. I'm just gonna hide it instead. He's telling you, no, the spirit is snapping in your mind, that ball is mine. That neighbor is mine. It's actually God's, but it's my assignment and I'm gonna walk in it for the glory of God. Amen? God, thank you for this, this, this word. We needed it. I needed it. And it's just, man, what a privilege to open your scriptures together, do this together, get each other's back. Whether you've given us five, two, or one, simply we wanna be found faithful. Faithful. Faithful, we need your grace and your power and your mercy. So if we've been backing down because of fear in these last few weeks, months, maybe even years. We pray just a new mind, a new courage, a new power to walk in, in everything you have for us, just to be great stewards, to manage what you've given us well. Investing, not ingesting. <laughs> Entrusted, not entitled, walking powerfully, God, confidently secure for your glory and to help a ton of people in Jesus' name.